All right, Matt Kern, uh, good job um, on some of your explanations of uh, what you were looking at for this upcoming week. We could drill down a little bit more on the specific numbers, but I certainly see where you're thinking lied. So let's take a look at uh, your first pick, which was ENZC. And let me share my screen before I forget. Okay, so <clears throat> ENZC, I think if you're not familiar with it, give it a look. It uh, does a lot with uh, trying to provide a cure for HIV. As always, we want to look at the stock in all time frames. So I'm going to walk you through how I would actually be looking at it. And so I would draw my chart lines on the weekly, which would give me an idea where the pullback range possibly could be. And I would write weekly and I'd probably write 39 cents support. And then I'm going to take a look at the downward trend lines. And we're dealing with a weekly chart. So I know that this particular next candle would only be right here. So to get above it from uh, breaking the trend on the weekly, it is roughly 55 cents for the breakout on the weekly. And then I would kind of take a look at some of the candles a little bit more closely. And I see that we're pretty much got a, a stair stepper down one, two, three, and then we're, we're kind of breaking this four um, and not a five. And it looks like we're starting to move up and I'll draw a smaller trend line here just to kind of look for a second. Now I'll take a look at the, sorry, that was the four hour chart we're looking at there. I apologize, four hour chart. Let's take a look at the weekly. Something was a little strange. All right, weekly, let's try this again. Weekly, I'll draw my line out. And on the weekly, if we had more candles printing, I know if I extend this line out, it's gonna be over 30 cents. So I'm gonna put roughly support on the weekly is about 35 cents. And then I'll make this a little bit bigger for you. And I'll draw another upper, upper trend line. And if I drew this, extended this trend line down, I know that uh, on the weekly, once this new candle prints, we're probably talking somewhere around a breakout of 57, 58 cents, somewhere in that neighborhood. But we want to drill down and take a look at the stock in all time frames. So let's look at the daily. A little bit bigger. So on the daily, you know, if I extend this down again, we're going to get another candle right in here. It uh, looks like the breakout area is about at 55 uh, cents, the bigger breakout picture. You know, we're going to keep drilling down. We'll take a look at the four hour. Four hour, we're looking at uh, again about 55 cents. And I'm literally writing four hours, 55 cents. Take a look at the hourly. Starting to drill down a little further. The hour with hourly, we're looking at about. 51 and a half cents, we'll call it 52 cents. We'll drill down even further. And you can notice here on the hourly chart, we're making a little bit of a cup and handle. So if you think of this as a cup of coffee, comes around and then over. So this is a real positive uh, look right here. But you see that in other places, it doesn't mean it won't go down. Because if we look right here, cup, handle, and then a reversal printed, and down we went. 
So we want to keep an eye on that. One of the other things that's nice right here is the hammer printing. Positive candles, indecisive, the joy printing, and then a hammer, which is showing some good strength. It's a, it's a nice pattern right there. 30 minute chart. I could come high, but I want to follow where the green is on this one. And so it looks like we're, we're pretty much breaking through resistance. And you know you have it pegged somewhere <clears throat> right where it is. And I would look to be a buyer if we're starting to clear roughly 5% of this range right here. So if we have 47.92 times 105% is 50. This is on the 30 minute chart, 0.503. And what I tell you all the time is, you know, if, if, a, if a stock is going to start a new pattern, it needs to clear it with volume and it needs to confirm it with about a 5% above where the resistance level would be. So the resistance level would be right in here at the 47.7-ish the area and 5% above that is 50.3. So right in here is where I would want to be a buyer and what I would probably do is put a buy stop limit order in. So when it hits that number, or possibly even a little bit above that number, that's when it'll stop me in and I'll actually purchase it. Take a quick look at the 15 minute chart. You see a nice long candle right here. Some good volume at the end, which you talked about uh, when you looked at the Yahoo Finance chart. And we can see right here that the resistance level is pretty much again right here, practically 48 cents. So when it breaks through that, uh, then you can see where the next resistance levels are. You know, it's an opportunity if you buy it right, right here, like 50 cents, you stand to uh, earn some money. So let's take a look at Yahoo Finance real quick. You've already covered uh, bar chart, fine, uh, bar chart com. We'll take a quick look at uh, Yahoo as well. So let's see here. One of the other things I would check over here, I like to see the one day, see what it looks like. I'll take a look at how much red do I see in here? Because the red obviously means it's closing lower than the previous time frame. So we're looking at, a, looks like we're looking at them pretty much in every two minutes. It's every two minutes chart we're looking at on the daily. So I'll make that uh, a five minute chart. Take a harder look. I tell you guys all the time, volume precedes price. You can see where the volume was here in September and October. If you were a buyer back when it was a penny, you know, and you held it. And then we got a, you know, a bigger DeJoy. We're starting to move out. And then we had a run. So if you could have bought this at a penny in October and you could have sold it up here in the 90s, you would have had uh, <laughs> 90 times your money, which is uh, quite a return on the money for buying something in October and we're in, in uh, February. Had a good day, it was up 24%. And you know we're looking at a monthly chart, but let's take a look at a smaller time frames weekly. Take a look. Let's take a look at the four hour, which we covered already under think or swim. We look pretty good. And then what I would do, I would go in and take a look at uh, the volume and the float. Historical data is where I get my volume, see what the volume looks like. You know, the volume wasn't, uh, wasn't impressive at all, but it's not bad, but it's a lot lower than some of the previous 15 days. And that's, that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing, though, because the stock was up 24%. So it's not a bad thing. Um, and then we look at what the float might be. And, and one thing you want to keep in mind is if somehow these numbers don't seem to make sense, it may not be updated. There's been times I'll look at something and the, it'll say the float is, is you know, 200 million, but it's trading 600 million shares. 
And there's just no way that float is 200 million because the stock is not going anywhere. So in this case, it says, you know, outstanding, there are 2.44 billion shares, doesn't give us the float. And it doesn't look like, at least at the moment, there's really any institutional or insider ownership. And then I would go back to the summary. I would take a look, is there an earnings date coming up? I'll take a look at the news that they had five days ago and 20 days ago. And eventually what you'll, you'll we'll get into is we'll, we will take a look at uh, some technical analysis on the stocks. And you can use a variety of services. You know, if I'm looking at stockcharts.com and I can start to break down, um, you know, the moving averages and, you know, relative strength, you know, relative strength has come down, which gives us an opportunity to possibly run. It's above its 50 day moving average. But remember garbage in, garbage out because you set these parameters down here. Um, moving average convergence and divergence. It's below, so this thing is kind of bringing it down. But once it turns up, once this top line turns up above the red line, it's typically a very, very positive thing. Uh, so there's a lot of different things you can do to um, drill down even further on what you're looking at. So I'll look at a gallery view, take a look at the cash money flow, if money's flowing out. Um, and then I'll look at it on a weekly basis. Looks like we're a little toppy in here. Um, so there we go. Uh, from a, you know, would I buy it? Um, I would only be a buyer if it is breaking above, uh, I'll say 50 and a half cents, 51 cents is, would be a little safer. And then I would be careful to ensure um, that we're not going to get any pullbacks. So I do like the pick mat for this week. You just simply need to uh, not buy it prematurely. Wait till the, the, the confirmation of the breakout is confirmed. So your second pick was F-O-R-D. You broke that down well as it related to uh, the uh, correlation to TSMP, which was right on the mark. The, the charts pretty much mirror each other. Uh, and you explain to people that they have a heavy investment in TSNP, which they do. So let's take a look at the weekly chart. Got a big reversal here coming, bringing it down. But what are we seeing right here on the weekly? We're seeing strength because this thing was all the way down. This is last week, of course, to roughly uh, the low was 50 cents even but it pulled up from there. So it, you know, it hit it, but it rejected it and it started to come up. If I'm looking at uh, the retracement, you know, obviously retracement numbers are 32.5%, 50%, and 62.5%. A lot of times when I get a runner, I'll, I wanna do 70% because I wanna limit the downside risk. So if I'm looking at roughly 11.5 cents to $1.33, minus 11.5 cents is $1.21.5 times 0.70, it's 85 cents. I subtract the 85 cents from the dollar 33, and we get 47.95. So 48 cents would have been the buy. Guess where that went to last week? Right there at 50 cents, and that's where you could have had a a uh, an open order placed somewhere in there, and you probably would have gotten a fill. Remember, you know the 70 percent retracement that I like to use. It's just a, a pretty good guide, but you know, you don't have to be overly greedy. And when you drill down, you may, we may see that, you know, the closer number that we might want to use would have been somewhere around low fifties. Um, but, but it's pretty accurate, you know? So if we look at uh, the daily, we see our run that we had from roughly 12 cents to $1.33. We came down to the 50 cent range. And if I draw a trend line that takes me to 70 cents um, and it's, so it's breaking through that and we closed above that. Now, what would be great if it came back and retouched about 70 cents, uh, that would be fantastic because I love when something breaks through, they confirm it with decent enough volume and then it gives me that last call for alcohol or a retouch. Let's take a look at, uh, 
the four hour chart. Try that one again. Okay, four hour. Looks very similar to the daily chart. We do have a confirmed breakout. I can draw another trend line here. So we broke this downtrend and then we broke this downtrend here and we closed above it. And so that looks good there. One hour chart, lines carrying over. Nice cup and handle right here. Here's your cup, here's your handle, and we started to break up. So if we can get a anywhere like 74-ish uh, minor pullback, here's how I would play it, Matt. I would have an open order, and I'm gonna write a little note. I would have an open order to buy it, uh, say in the 74s, if I can get it. And uh, and then I would, based on looking at it, I would be a buyer at the open at 79. And with the one hour chart, we had that good volume late down here. And now let's take a peek at Yahoo Finance. We see again late volume, but some of it was some you know some selling. I see the red in here. Um, five day chart looks good. We got that big giant sort of cup and handle here. And what I also like to look at, Matt, is the monthly chart. It gives me a, a good picture of what's what. So this is for the entire month. So November, December, January, right here in January is, if you look here, we're flatline month after month. So here's your first bleep right here. Uh, same time uh, TSNP was moving. So eight cents would have been your buy. You got a little pause in the action, which is fantastic. And then you could have bought it. You, here's where we started to move out right here in January. So you could have bought it here on the on the initial breakout. Could have bought a little bit more when it when it was consolidating for a second. It didn't come down much, which is fantastic. And then you could have the following month you could have bought more of it, and then it ran to whatever it ran to, you know, a dollar uh, thirty three. So that's a, a healthy return on your money over a four month period. So you always want to buy it right. You know, if you were out in front of this, you know, the better buy would have been right there at about fifty one, fifty two cents. You know, coming down. You know, that's why I keep telling you guys to do your homework, put in alerts. You know, have things on your radar. You know, but if you didn't get it coming down, you do recognize it, which is good. Coming back up. So, I, I like both picks. Um, again, with forward, I would be looking at a open order to see if I can get it at seventy four, and then I would be looking to buy it right at the open at seventy nine eighty ish, and uh, and then you should be uh, in the green for both of those picks. Uh, I do like forward uh, a little bit better uh, because of the connection to TSNP um, and because, you know, ENZC uh, is, uh, they're a little bit behind the COVID game, if you will. Part of what they were trying to do was uh, do some things as related to COVID uh, with their monoclobials, but, um, a lot of their main focus is in HIV uh, and some other cures. So anyway, both picks are good. Good work. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.